Hello and welcome to Edukimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss the Gazette magazine for 6 September 2021, your daily guide to UPSC current affairs. Now, the hot selling articles in the market today are first one Digital Health IDs, an important update from the perspective of Digital Health Repository. The second one is the impact that India may receive because of climate change, $6 trillion by 2050, update on the same. And the third one are new rules regarding tax contribution to EPF, Employees Provident Fund, we will understand it. This day in history dedicated to John Dalton. Now the featured news for today is on climate laws in India. This is a separate video, the rest of the uh, v uh, articles that you see will be on a different video. Now, in the times when the climate crisis is impending, we need a law, we need a climate law. We have got laws around climate, but we don't have a climate mitigation, management, adaptation and development law. And therefore, in this article, we will understand what are the various ways in which a country can design a climate law. This becomes very important from the perspective of the main examination, where a question like this will be due, will be due. So the three ways, what are the advantages and what are the challenges? for our country. So this is a separate video. Now image of the day is on blue lobster, a rare species found. Terms and concept for today. The first one is a device developed by Indian Institute of Science, device for bio experiments in space. The second one is uh, plastic packs, the first Asian country to develop this plastic pack, which is that country, India. The third one is Behar Turtle Conservation Award presented to an Indian. And this is, this is at par with the Nobel, Peace, uh, Nobel Prize. Bitter Kanika National Park is the fourth term we discussed, we'll know why. Editorials of the day. The first editorial is forming an important linkage between malnutrition and WASH. WASH stands for Water, Sanitation and Hygiene. The second editorial chiefly is about reforms in the reservation system, reservation policy, especially for OBCs, OBC subcategorization. And the third one talks on the undesirables, immorality of reaching out to undesirables who are Taliban. And the case study for today is on rural Jodhpur and how a transformation in reading habits are being done in Jodhpur. Let's start the discussion. We have dedicated this day in history to John Dalton because it was on September 6, 1766 that he was born. He did extensively some research in the field of atomism, which deals with atomic size, atomic weight, its structure and its components. He also researched on color blindness and meteorology. And he was only a school teacher. Now, I am also a teacher receiving only a few likes, hardly any comments on YouTube. But the activities I might be doing in background Snapshot one is on digital health IDs. Remember those times when we see old people carrying huge certificates, their prescriptions and the x-rays carrying in a huge polythene bag to hospitals? Those days are gone. Why? Because Delhi and Tamil Nadu have introduced digital health IDs to people. This is what they have planned. Now what is the main plan? This is under the national health stack that is a part of national digital health blueprint. Now the main idea is to ensure that all the prescriptions, all the medical documents, all the kind of uh, pharmaceutical things that we take in, they be present at one place in one repository. How will it help? It will help everybody. First of all, we won't have to carry those huge polythene bags. This is one. The second benefit of it is for the doctors. Doctor is, uh, will come to know what has been the previous diagnosis, what kind of medication one has gone through and this is how they will be able to assist. Thirdly, insurance. So a lot of benefits will come in the same place, right? This is one. So this is how it is going to help. Now, how will it happen? It will happen by giving each person a unique ID, a health ID. And this is what digital ID we are talking of. It will be generated either through one's phone number or through Aadhaar card, right? This is one. Now, this makes the whole healthcare more efficient. This is very similar to what we studied day before yesterday. We studied about account aggregator in the field of banking, right? And this is an account aggregator in the field of medicine and health services, right? What are the challenges? Challenges very similar to every other place, privacy. The moment we make anything digital, privacy becomes an issue. India, India has an issue of access of internet. If you are making things online, we have to ensure that access is faster. Interoperability of data. Now we have to ensure that all the systems be merged together in a very, very integrated manner. So these are the issues or if we sorted, if it is sorted, then these are the advantages of the same. Snapshot 2 talks about the monetary loss that India will face because of climate change. Now Deloitte has carried out this uh, important uh, survey and research and it says that by the year 2050, this, this year itself we will have a loss of $6 trillion to the economy if climate change is not adapted to and mitigated. 
Also, by the year 2070, we will have a loss of around 35 trillion dollars just because of climate change. Now, the important sectors which will get affected are service, manufacturing, retail tourism, and otherwise all other sectors. So, service receives a maximum impact of around 11 trillion dollars in the year 2050 itself. Now, not only this, do remember agriculture sector. How will people be able to cultivate? What about human resources? The children, children going to schools, everybody will get affected, right? And this is where the challenge lies and this is where the opportunity also lies. How is there an opportunity? Opportunity is there for the country because India is the hotbed, hotbed of investments for climate change. Why? Because there is increased demand, increased demand for management to climate. India has already unveiled its plan to have 450 gigawatt plan of the green energy, green energy out of 850 gigawatt by the year 2030. So the decarbonization plan of India is a massive, massive opportunity for the country and the world as well. Snapshot 3 is on rules for taxing contributions to the employer's provident fund. Now this fund is established for the welfare of the people working in an organization. Right now, this fund employs provident fund. Provident means for the future use. Right, so this fund people utilize only in case there is emergency for future planning. Right, for example, children's studies, for marriage of their children, or for retirement planning. Right, so, so people put in uh, money and the government utilizes this money for various developmental activities right so therefore government needs to pay certain rate of interest to the people say 8% so if i have deposited 1 lakh rupees i will get 8 8000 rupees per annum 8000 rupees per annum as interest of my contribution in employees provident fund right now presently this 8000 that i earn is not taxable it is not taxable. So what people have started to do is to make their money safe. They have started to put in a huge amount of money in employer's provident fund and then government is liable to pay taxes. So now the government has come up with some changes in the same. Government has said that people working in the private sector and the government sector, they will have 2.5 lakh and 5 lakh of maximum contribution for the EPF if they don't want their interest to be taxed. If they want that this 8,000 rupees 8,000 rupees interest be taxed, then they can put in as much amount of money, right? Also, you should remember that EPF is a long-term funding, right? And therefore, this 8,000 will also become amount of principal. It, it will become a part of principal for the next year. So this amount will again be taxed. So it will be taxation in perpetuity. This is most important. It will not just be taxed for the first year. It will be amount. It will be taxed for perpetuity. Image of the day is on blue lobster. This is rarest to rare find. One in two million, this has been found by a fisherman in Scotland. Also, this is a genetic abnormality, just like the albino tigers who are a genetic abnormality. The first term in news is a new device for bio experiments in space that has been created by ISRO and IISC, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Now, what they are trying to do is to have a device in which in which the cultivation of microorganisms will happen in space and also uh, one will be able to understand what is their growth rate in space and this is going to help the human space mission in space especially Gaganyaan so people will go in the space right Indian uh, astronauts will go in space and they will also take uh, with them certain microorganisms to understand their growth right to cultivate them and this device will carry out this experiment by gauging the optical density optical density when light is passed through the mac microorganism so their growth will be understood and tested right so these are the containers second term in use is india becoming the first asian country to launch plastic packs important stakeholders are the organizations which are into fast moving consumer group goods brands manufacturers retailers recyclers so this is a part of extended producers responsibility and cii confederation for indian industry along with wwf india they are participants in this whole plastic pack what do they want they want that plastic be recycled first of all to recycle it has to be respected and if it is respected then it can be recycled in the whole system right so the main idea is, is to ensure that recycling of any kind of plastic is done to the level of 25 percent and then recycling of certain reusable and recyclable plastic to be done up to 100 and 100 percent 
The third term in news is Behar Turtle Conservation Award. This award is equivalent to a Nobel Prize in field of turtle conservation. And it has been this time presented to an Indian, Shalender Singh, who has worked for less than 15 years, but uh, achieved a remarkable feat of helping around 30 indigenous varieties of turtle and tortoise in our country. Turtle and tortoise, they are poached and they are smuggled to the rate that 200 of them, individual turtles and uh, tortoise, are, po are poached or smuggled every week. And an organization called as Traffic wildlife trade uh, monitoring mechanism this this is a part of IUCN and this is what assists in understanding the rate of total poaching and smuggling the fourth term in news is Bhitar Kanika National Park it is in news because an important river the river called as River Brahmani, which feeds into this national park, the water from this river is getting diverted and therefore it might uh, affect the fragile ecological balance in this mangrove vegetation plantation. Now, the mangroves here are so extent that uh, this is the second most important mangrove vegetation after Sundarbans. This is also the place where crocodiles, saltwater crocodiles breed. This is also the place where the mass nesting of olive ridley turtles also begins. Therefore, this area is really important. News is about Bhitar Kanika National Park. The first editorial talks about the important linkage between nutritional insecurity and WASH. WASH standing for Water, Sanitation and Hygiene. The editorial begins by highlighting the various kind of challenges that children have faced during COVID times and most important it says is the nutritional insecurity channel. UNICEF has already said that around 12 lakh children will be dying in the next six months because of nutritional insecurity and one fourth of that will die in India itself. National Family Health Survey also highlights the same. It says that 38% of children in India have not received uh, their ad ad the adequate height as compared to their age and this is 38% in India but the average in developing countries, not developed, developing countries is 25%. So why is India having more of this population, right? Not only that, wasting, that means the thinning, the thinning of the waste and uh, the body as compared to the height. So India has had around 20% of the wasted children as compared to 9% in the other developing economies. So what is the cause of this? The obvious cause is dietary intake. This is what we understand. That people do not take adequate diet. But there are hidden causes also. This is what the article focuses on. It says the underlying cause is water, it is sanitation and it is personal hygiene. Right. So where we are going for our nature call, what kind of water we are drinking, what kind of uh, uh, sanitation measures do we apply in our own country. Right. So 50% of the malnourished or undernourished children, they have gone through an issue of diarrhea and diarrhea very much relates to the water that we drink. It talks about, it means that sanitation measures that we apply in our country are not enough. Right. They, it also relates to intestinal worms. Right. And there is a huge interdependence to the nutritional insecurity. That means the kind of nutrition that the body is not able to absorb and water, sanitation and hygiene measures. This is something that has been ignored. Why the government is only trying to incorporate portion abhyan, but it is not ensuring these kind of integrated schemes like WASH. So what is required is to manage something called as environmental enteropathy. What is enteropathy? Enteropathy is the nutrition malabsorption that happens because of chronic gut injury. So the stomach is not able to absorb the important nutrients. Why? Because we drink this kind of white water. Why? Because we have got infection in, in our uh, stomach and intestine, right? And this also impairs the cognitive development of the individual. It also results in anemia. It also results in diarrhea. Now 9% of children in uh, within the age of 5 years, they have got diarrhea sometime or the other. So just opposite of the, this will happen if we start to focus on the measures to contain and to manage wash. That is is water, sanitation and hygiene. WHO says that 8.6 lakh of children per year can be saved, can be saved from death in case we apply these kind of measures. So almost 1 million children around the world, right? This will also help in management of COVID. This will also help in management of flood times, right? The second editorial focuses on deprivation, even despite the presence of reservation system in the country. The editorial begins by talking about the reservation for OBCs in the All India Quota for NEET examination. Also, the increased amount of debate for releasing caste census data. This is where the editorial says that reservation for marginalized was introduced so that oppression and humiliation of the communities of the marginalized communities be eliminated. The idea was to increase power sharing, decision making, equalization of life and removal of disabilities. Now, 
these are the important terms that you can use in your answer writing directly very good terms right and therefore in this context the editorial points out the obc community now we, this is specific to the rohini commission report rohini commission which was on sub categorization of obc because certain communities in obc receive more advantages more benefits and certain do not receive at all very good data uh, data and statistics it has presented 97% of the central obc reservation benefits what are the benefits one relates to education and the second one employment both these go to only 25% communities and around 37 communities are uh, 37% obc communities are completely deprived of these advantages and we are only talking of the central government right now we are leaving apart, apart state government data because uh, it is very hard to find and therefore policy for state are very hard to even find right the idea here conveyed is that there is a requirement of sensitive evidence based policy option so the policy measure that it says is that there should be an equal opportunities commission and we have had this commission in countries like usa and uk india needs to have equal opportunities commission so that discrimination on the basis of caste gender religion etc uh, they be eliminated also so this commission will be having important task of auditing auditing those government and private bodies where uh, the equal opportunities has to be given not only that they will also be having a performance appraisal of these commissions the third editorial talks about the morality or immorality of accepting taliban as the leader in afghanistan the editorial starts by saying that government of india has had open engagements with taliban now earlier there were secret meetings but these open meetings have been criticized on moral grounds why should we accept taliban as a leader when they have been committing atrocities on people when there is immense brutality and human rights violation by taliban right although taliban has been accepted by united nations security council resolution 2593 we studied this in the terms yesterday only but there are questions being asked on the government of india this is where the editorial talks that moral judgments in international relation it is on very very much slippery grounds it is on strategic grounds right so right and wrong shall be determined on the power politics of the region of the strategic interest of the region right and man we have seen uh, previously also united states has spoken of axis of evil rogue state for countries like cuba for countries like uh, uh, north korea and then we have iran and this time the america is not talking like that for taliban right so this kind of discredit has been given in inter international space only because of certain reasons reasons who are these undesirables the undesirables can be non state act state actors they can be individual persons right and can they be state yes america has done it to various states as as i just spoke of right and israel somebody though this is not a part of the editorial but openly thinking about it israel can also be rated as such by some some uh, entities right so who has to be singled out is a matter of strategic choice now there are three options at present uh, with respect to taliban one to continue to fight militarily with it second to isolate and have sanctions against them and third to merge them to engage them and to socialize them now the the second one to isolate and sanction them we have done this in between right 1996 to 2001 we have studied about taliban history in one of the feature articles clearly right so you refer to that you will understand so uh, this is about isolation we have already tried this what about uh, military fight we have been doing this uh, in the last 20 years 2001 onwards usa has been doing and now it is war weary now third one is to engage and socialize this is the means this is the only means strategic means and this is one of the means that may possibly change them internationally so sustained negotiation negotiations can possibly change the the behavior of taliban towards international community and domestic people as well right so this is the one alternative that is available with respect to uh, a quick sortic notion quick sortic is absolutely ideal notion absolutely idealistic notion of the moral universalism so this is what the editorial says peace building is not always a white back business it is a complex process case study of the day is from jodhpur this is the case of uh, ngo called as room to read they have presented a camel cart to students so that they be have good access to books now during the times of covid small children did not even have access to online education there was nothing of that sort for them they did not have books they did not have discipline to study and there was no uh, reading habit right and this is the place where the the, uh, the situation was utilized by room to read and prem chandra sakla what they did was initiated the camel carts in the villages in jodhpur and through this they initiated a reading habit with the children with the help of decorated camel carts because this is where the children would get attracted to also parents were engaged so parent engagement helped in the growth of child now this can help in employment generation of these camel carts this can help in cognitive response discipline the the development of the individual in in terms of education so this is how education becomes accessible to everybody
If you like this video, if you like our effort, do share some love on us through comments, shares, and likes. If you subscribe to the channel, you will receive timely updates. Thanks for watching.